Because so many parents, when they have so many children, they want to give out some children out and then get money. It happens. So where parents collect money from whoever that is taking their children. So they don't care about what their children is facing. Uh -huh. They just get the money. Mm. So it happens in different ways. Hi, my name is Nancy Hardcastle of Stand Up Be Great. I'm talking to Joseph Osigwe today. Hi, Joseph. Yeah, hello. Joseph's coming to us all the way from Nigeria, which is really exciting. Joseph started an organization called Devatop, which educates Nigerians about the problem of human trafficking. I wanted to begin by reading just a little excerpt from the homepage of their organization. It says, each day we think about better ways of building a nation without human trafficking. We educate and engage more young people to combat this crime. We look out for young people who are in the cage traffickers. When I read this, I just found it really beautiful because not only is the vision for the entire nation, but the idea is to mobilize the youth to realize this vision. So, Joseph, can you tell us how you got started in this work of anti-trafficking? Yeah, thank you so much, Nancy. It's a privilege, you know, speaking with you about our anti-human trafficking work. First, I want to say I, my background is mathematics education. I finished from University of Nigeria Soka, where I studied mathematics education. And then in Nigeria, when you graduate, you do what we call a national youth service. It's a one-year compulsory service you give to your fatherland. So that was how I started. I was sent to the capital of Nigeria, which is Abuja. And then in Abuja, I was posted to serve where they rehabilitate repentant sex workers. So what, what they do there is to get sex workers who need opportunity to you know, generate income so they can leave sex work. So they put them in a camp, train them on different skills, and then empower them with finance and resources to start their own business so that they can, as alternatives to sex work. Okay, so it's a so, place where they're helping sex workers get out of that life. Yeah, yes. Okay. I came in contact with a 14-year-old girl who shared a very pathetic story of how at the age of 12 years, her auntie took her from the village to Abuja, promised to send her to school. But unfortunately, the auntie introduced her to prostitution. The auntie got men to rape her at the age of 12. And then that was how she was introduced to prostitution. She makes money and the money goes to her auntie. So her and aunt tricked her into thinking that she was going to go to school and the aunt ended up trafficking her. Exactly. So, but she was classified as a sex worker. Nobody knew what she has passed through. She only shared the story with me and I felt so, so bad. I was so grieved. I felt, well, oh, maybe I could do something to sensitize young people about this, you know. So that was what propelled me to initiate a community project called uh, combating sex trafficking. Combating so sex I had to, yeah. So I had to engage a government agency called the the, the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking Persons. It's a federal agency that's in power to combat trafficking. And then with uh, international organizations, I engaged them to give me resources, and I carried out projects in five communities, reaching out to over two thousand people. That's in great. each of the communities, we organized two days training for them. And then I never understood the level of this crime until when we did the project, we started hearing people sharing their experiences on how they were abused, how they were taken from the village to, to, to Abuja, and their uncle kept abusing them. It was then I realized that human trafficking is a weapon against the future of young people. That was what came to my mind. Now, can you and say that again? Because I think that's really important. Human trafficking is what? It, 
is, a, is like a weapon against the future of young people. It's a weapon so that against was the future of young people. The future people. of young people, yeah. So that was what came to my mind. And I felt it was at that point I conceived the vision that my mandate would be to empower young people to be at the forefront yeah. of combating human trafficking. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, so, that's awesome. I love that. So, so I spent the rest of my life from that 2013 13, mm -hmm. to now mm -hmm. making sure I engage young people. Initially, it was difficult because an average young person in Nigeria believes that, I mean, this is something that concerns the government. And because I'm not a victim, they can't get involved in it. Oh, the so, average person thinks that this is a problem for the government. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. So it took us time to start changing the mindset of young people. We, we are very consistent in our advocacy, mm -hmm. in our training, in our campaign. And right now, we have a very sustainable movement of young people. We have over 300 volunteers who are committed in this fight, in, in, in over seven states in Nigeria, in different countries. So you have so, 300 people in over seven states of Nigeria. And, and four other countries. And also in other countries. Yeah, we have in Italy, we have in Netherlands, we have in Germany. And some of them come to Nigeria, sponsor themselves to come to Nigeria to be involved in the fight against trafficking. So that was how we started it. And it, after my national youth service, which ended after one year, we thought of sustaining the project. So that was how we conceived Devatop Center for African Development with the aim of engaging, building a nation without human trafficking and gender-based violence. Okay. Yeah, that was the, 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 the vision we had. We wanted to build a nation to have a Nigeria that human trafficking does not exist. So, and one of the ways to do that is to make sure that those who are at risk, which is mostly young people, are empowered to be at the forefront of fighting trafficking. And we are the leading youth-led anti-human trafficking organization in Nigeria. Oh, that's awesome. And, yeah, so really, and, uh, you're, you're using young people to reach young people. And you're saying it's the young, young those who are yeah. at risk. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. So for the past four years, we've been doing that. Then, but recently we realized that it's also important to engage other stakeholders. So we have to extend our work beyond young people mm -hmm. to Absolutely. reaching both parents, to reaching government agencies, to reaching state and non-state actors, because they're also very important in the fight against human trafficking. Absolutely. But mostly our workforce is more of young people, and they have been doing amazing work. We, we, we've we made them to own the fight against human trafficking. Right now, we have so many young people who are willing to put their resources to carry out projects in their communities. Mm -hmm. And we have pressures, people calling us from different states that they want to start this kind of movement in their state. But because of resources, we have to take it step by step. Right. But right. The, the, our happiness is that we've been able to uh, are working the consciousness of young people towards human trafficking right, and right. we have developed a lot of interest among young people and we can see very good results. So at, we, so for sure you know that awareness is being raised. If people are calling yeah. you from other places saying, please can you come help us or train us or whatever, then the word is going out. Yeah. That's, that's yes. great. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. And last so, last year we had we had two young people from Italy and, and uh, Netherlands that they said they were interested to come to Nigeria and join other young people. And they came here and spent three, three months. You know, these are young people below the age of 25 years. They came, sponsored themselves, spent three months in Nigeria to join our Nigerians to fight human trafficking. And that's what we're doing. Uh, this task is not a barrier. Anywhere you are, people can, you know, really take, uh, take action. Right, right, right. I read on your website there's a, that there's actually different types of trafficking happening in Nigeria. Could you talk about the different types? Yeah, you know, Nigeria has, is a country that has one of the largest number of uh, victims of human trafficking. In the, in the uh, world? In the world. We, we, have, we are among the top. Yeah, we are among the top. According to the Global Slavery Index 2018, we have 1.3 million victims of human trafficking in Nigeria. Wow. 
So in Africa, we're the highest. We have the largest number of victims of trafficking. Wow. So it is a huge concern to us, and I, I keep wondering what will happen in the next five years. It will increase if we don't take the appropriate uh, action. Yes, and of in course. Nigeria, though, what the international community hear about trafficking is when somebody from Nigeria is taken to Europe. But that is beyond it. Nigerians are trafficked to Europe for sexual prostitution, for sexual exploitation. But that is different. That is one aspect. We have internal trafficking more. We have what we call baby factory. Baby factory is where they use orphanage homes to traffic children and where they get girls, make them to have sex with men mm. and then when they get pregnant, after giving birth, their child will be taken away from them and sold to people who will use them for fetish reasons or will adopt them or something like that. Then we also have domestic servitude where we have housemaid, which is very common in Africa, where they, there are some families who go to villages, pick young children, I mean, people at the age of five, six, seven, nine, ten, mm -hmm. to do housemaid. Mm -hmm. And they are used as slaves. They don't go to school. Mm -hmm. They eat when others have finished eating. Mm -hmm. They sleep on the floor. Mm -hmm. They are subjected to so many inhuman treatments. Mm -hmm. So I just want to recap what you've said so far. The mm -hmm. first is, is sex trafficking, uh, I'll say, yeah, as yeah. we know it. So they'll take a young yeah. woman to Europe, for example. And the yes. second kind is when they're taking babies and children from orphanages oh, for, the jobs, yes. for pedophilia yeah. uh, abuse. So the third one, the, is the, the next one is the, the housemaid. Right. So then in the house slave situation, common. they're taking young children promising them education, I suppose they're promising the parents that they're going to educate yes. themselves, and instead they become a servant in someone's house, and they're treated very badly. And most of them, they pay their parents. They pay their parents money, you know, and it was, it's, it's at this point most parents send their children. What, are there any other types of trafficking? Yeah, yeah, we have some other type of trafficking. We have, we have the one that is more of child level. We have children who are using the farmland to dig, okay. you know, in the cocoa farm and so many other farm, you know, products they are used to cultivate farm. Okay. We also have, we also have organ trafficking as well. Organ we trafficking. We have organ trafficking. Organ trafficking, organ harvest. It happens in Nigeria as well. Uh -huh. It happens in Nigeria as some Nigerians are taking to Saudi Arabia, to India for organ harvesting, which is also very common. Then another one, which is also very common in Nigeria, is uh, Amadri. Amadri is an Islamic name. Okay. You know, the, the children who are born in, in the Islamic family, they don't usually go to formal school. Okay. They are meant to have Islamic scholar who will take care of them. Okay. But most times they are used to beg on the streets. So they take small plates, go on different streets, begging for money, and whatever they get goes to their master. I see. Okay. Yeah. So most of them use the student to beg on the street and then Got it. take the whole money. It. Yes. Uh, so in the case of children, they're being used for all kinds of stuff. They're being used for sex. They're being used for manual labor. They're being used as house servants. In this case, they're being used to beg. Yeah. All right. Yes. Actually, I wanted to ask you, I want to go back to what you were talking about just a minute ago about parents who have a lot of children and they feel the need to get rid of one. Is this largely driven by poverty? Because I, I think it's important to distinguish the desperation that people feel when they're very, very poor. I mean, is that the case? Is that, what, is that what's happening? Yeah, poverty is among the factors that contribute to that, yes, because parents who have so many children and who are not able to take care of them have the tendency of giving their children away, unlike parents who have the resources to take care of their, 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 their children. So where we have the number of, where we have high incidences among parents who have more children but are not able to take care of them, uh -huh. so which means poverty contributes. Even though we have lack of value system, we also have situation where maybe is from polygamous family. We have the one polygamous family. Probably a man marries two wives. The first wife is late. The second wife doesn't want to have the 
children of the first wife and he wanted to dispose them. So a lot of factors contribute to that. Wow, That's a, that makes it more complicated. Is your organization educating the country about all of those that we talked about or are they focusing on one or more? Yeah, we, we focus on all aspects of human trafficking. Yeah, we focus on all aspects of human trafficking. We have so many projects that address different forms of trafficking. There's one we did that's called Humans Not for Trade. It's a campaign called Human Not for Trade. It's a way of making people realize that human beings, children are not for for, for trade. They shouldn't be used to exchange for money or something right. like that. And right. that's we, we carried that project in, in, in internally displaced camp in villages and so many communities. Uh-huh. And that was able to help them to understand the value of human being so that they can equate it with money. Uh-huh. Yes. The slogan is humans are not for trade, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Right. I think that's so powerful because it covers all of that. It's just what yes. you were saying that the value, the value of humans is not something that you can buy and sell. So it doesn't matter yeah. what kind of trafficking you might want to be involved in or you're looking exactly. at. None of it's okay. Yes, yes. So we've carried out, um, in 2015, we, we did a pilot project called the Academy for Prevention of Human Trafficking. Academy for the Prevention of Human Trafficking. Of Human Trafficking, yes. Okay. So we selected 120 young people from six states in Nigeria and trained them as advocates Great. and empowered them with resources, materials to create, to carry out anti-human trafficking projects in their states. And within nine months, they were able to reach out to 6,000 people and reported cases. And one of the cases was about a girl who was trafficked from one state to the other state for forced marriage and we rescued oh. her. So, but the thing is that most of the reports we've gotten are from people that we've trained. Because at the point, initially we were doing more of awareness until we now realize that that awareness is not enough. Oh, right. Awareness is not yeah, enough. Absolutely. Yeah, not enough. You've got to do something. So, we, so we, we realized that there is so much work to do, mm-hmm. but few people are available to do that. And that was how we now started engaging in capacity building so that we will have to replicate the passion to fight human trafficking among young people so they can reach out to communities where we cannot ordinarily reach. And that is what we've been doing right now. We train young people, we equip them with resources, and we empower them to become an advocate in their community. And that has been helping a lot. And our volunteers, which is up to 300 people, we train them regularly. And we always tell them, volunteerism is not about registration, it's about action. So all our volunteers, every year we have a plan for volunteers. Anywhere you are, you make sure you carry out projects. If you are a teacher, make sure you reach out to your students and give us reports. Right, that's good. Yeah. So it did that idea that it has been making us to, you know, transfer the passion to other people. And they now carry out the fight because we can't be everywhere. But we need... Right, but if you have that stuff. kind of network building right network. where one person yes. is training 30 yeah, people or 50 people and then each of those go out and train then yeah. you don't it's need really to be really everywhere good. because there are trained people you don't, you don't need to be everywhere. and it's really i mean that's one of our excitement because it has made us to be more sustainable in right, our work exactly exactly we, we don't have more staff our work rely more on volunteerism and we've been having amazing volunteers you know people coming Anyone can be a victim. We always tell them that nobody is immune to human trafficking. So don't think because you're not a victim today, you can't be a victim tomorrow. We, we wouldn't want our children to grow up and become victims to human trafficking. So that is why we must make sure we do whatever we can do to protect this generation and the next generation from human trafficking. Right, right. Um, last year, we did a, after a project we did, our volunteer went to the state and did an awareness. And through that awareness, a case was reported about a lady that was trafficked from Nigeria to Mali. A lady that was trafficked from Nigeria she was trafficked to Mali. To Mali, yeah. Okay. They promised her that she was going to pick diamond in Mali. That she was going to do what? Pick diamond. Oh, pick diamonds. 
in, in money. Like this for diamonds. That was a promise. Yes, yes. That was a promise the trafficker gave her that she would make money and you know and take care of her family and you know something. All those fake promises and she succumbed and when she reached money, they seized her documents and she was sold three times in money. Okay. So when, when the report get to us, got to us, we now set the trap for the trafficker to come and pick another girl. When she kept, she was arrested. And the, the case has been in court since last year. Oh, wow. So her yeah, trafficker was so caught. He was, yeah, was caught. Oh, wow. That's good. So, and she yeah, was able to go back. Business. She was able to, yeah, come back. We've even opened a business for her. We have to raise money to open a business for her. Right now, she having a, she's running a restaurant business wow. in her community. Wow, yes. that's great. I yeah. wanted you to so tell I, me about, yeah. sorry. Um, yeah, one of the things we do, sorry to call it short. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Most times, people, we don't have shelter. Mm -hmm. And when we have victims that need support, we raise support for the victim. Some of the victims we rescue, be able to help them start up businesses because most times in Nigeria lack so many services, so we must make sure that they don't go back to their former situation. So we provide them with the basic things they need to generate income. That's huge. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, actually, I've been thinking about that recently, that at least in the United States, many women would leave their traffickers if they knew there was resources available for them when they got out. There's not a lot of resources right now, so I think it's it's makes it scarier and harder for them. Yeah, you're right. Well, and the same thing in your case with the the parents who feel the need to give up their children, right? If they had better employment um, and more resources, then they wouldn't feel that need. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just a major issue. You know, in Nigeria, we lack social protection. There is no basic program by the government to provide the basic need for those living in poverty. Okay. So that almost of them, they don't even ask for much, just little, some basic things that make them be comfortable. Sure. So when these basic things lack, they are more vulnerable to, Absolutely. to human trafficking. Yes. Absolutely. So can you say something? You mentioned this earlier about the displaced people and these, there's these internally displaced persons camps. Can you explain what that is and why those people are very vulnerable? Yeah, the entire displaced camp is a camp where we have people who were displaced because of uh, insurgencies in Nigeria and communal crisis. Because in Nigeria we have a regular insurgency and communal crisis in different villages, which make people leave their community to where they can get protection. So when you say so, insurgency, you're talking about military, some kind of military action. Yeah, for example, the Boko Haram insurgency. Remember the Boko Haram in Nigeria, which displays over 3 million people. In, in Nigeria? North, yeah, in Nigeria, yes. So, so 3 so million that alone, people were displaced, displaced in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. So in, there are so many internally displaced camp in different states in Nigeria where these displaced people are hosted, are being hosted. So that is where we have internally displaced camp because they are displaced. It's supposed to be a temporary place until when there is a, when they resolve issues in the community, they can go back. But some of them have spent over four years in the So camp. essentially they had to run away from their home to, to keep yes. themselves and their families safe because of yes. these insurgents. Uh, who yeah. are violent, and they're waiting in these camps, hoping for a chance to be able to go back home. To, to go back home, yes. Okay. So, but how, but how, but the children at the camp are so vulnerable because traffickers take advantage of this. They go to the camp, promise the parents that they are going to take their children out to cities and, you know, and send them to schools and all that. And of course, the prayer of the parents is to make sure that the child is well taken care of. So, on most sides, they have gone to different camps and take these children out and use them for some forms of exploitation. So we realized this and we felt it is important to reach out to this camp, sensitize them, sensitize the parents, so that if anyone is coming to offer help, then they have to get a government approval. Oh, excellent. They shouldn't be desperate to give out their children because of their situation. 
Right. So and that helped a lot. In fact, one of the camps, the chief was telling us that they, they had people coming to tell them that they would take their children out. And they asked them, do you have government approval? Can you first of all approve the government and others? Good. So that is also what trying to make sure we avert human trafficking in the internally displaced camp. Of course, we also have issues of sexual exploitation in the camp where the girls have been sexually exploited because right. you know they're vulnerable to different forms of human rights abuse sure. because yeah. Let me ask you something. Let's just think of one camp that's near you. Around how many people are in just that one camp? Okay, there is a camp here we have, it's called Kuchinguru. It's, it's a local name, Kuchinguru, and we have Area 1. The one in Kuchinguru, we have over 250 people 250. at the camp. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's actually kind of a manageable size. I mean, you could, yeah. you could have one presentation where you tell everyone all at the same time, you've got to be careful about this. Yeah, yes. But then we have the one at Area 1 which is over 400 people there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, 400 people. They, have, they even have an unofficial school, like a training where they train their children, not the organized school, but just to make them understand the basic literacy skill. Sure, so that they're not yeah. totally wasting their time and getting behind. Yes. That's good. The camp is not just hosting those who are displayed because of insurgency. We still have people who maybe due to community crisis, like, you know, there can be tribal crisis in the community and people leave their community to other places. We still have that issue as well. So you said so tri tribal insurgency. conflict. Yeah, tribal conflict, yes. But the effect so is the same, insurgency. that the neighborhood become, or sorry, the community becomes dangerous. Yes. yes. Okay, so then people have to leave. Right. And, and get to other places. How can people who are watching this interview support you and your organization and support the work of educating Nigerians? Oh, well, like I said, human trafficking requires a lot of resources. I mean, to fight a, a crime that's worth over uh, billions of dollars, it doesn't mean we have to use the empty pockets, it requires resources. So, we, if people who are willing to volunteer, people who are willing to make any form of donation, they can visit our website www.devatop.org okay. to you know, donate online and so we can use it to reach out to more people. There is so much work to do in Nigeria and we still need people to support our work yes. in combating. We need to finish, but I just wanted to ask you if there was anything else that you would like to say. Okay, yes. In, um, last year, we started a project called Tokam. It's, mean, it's meant to speak up. So we developed the first human rights abuse mobile application in Nigeria. So where people can report with their smartphone. is is a mobile app, is a mobile app as well. People can use it and report whatever they see, and we can now respond to that. So, so it's, it's an it's app. People can use it. It's an it's app an where app, people yes. can report when they think they're seeing human trafficking. Yes, or any other human rights abuse. So when you report, we now okay. law enforcement agents to respond to the case. Oh, that's great. Report, yeah. That's great. There's um, yeah. a page on your website about that as well, right? Yes, yes. All right. I'll be sure to okay. have links in the notes. Oh, okay. That's good. All right. Thank you so much, Joseph. So, I really appreciate the work that you're so doing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.